this lesson, we're going to talk about some special factorizations. You know how to factor using the diamond, but there are certain cases where that's not the most effective way. If you remember these special cases, you can save yourself some time. So we are going to look at three special cases. The first one, my favorite, is the difference of squares. Next, we'll talk about perfect squares in addition and subtraction modes. Here are the formulas. You can look at them. Okay, on to examples. The difference of squares is, and I know I say this a lot, but it's actually one of my really favorite things because it's so easy. Every time I have to factor something and I recognize it as a difference of squares, I get excited because I know I'm not gonna have to do any work. I just need to write it out the way that I've memorized it. Now, you recognize the difference of squares because, well, there's a square and another square and they're being subtracted. So, difference of squares. And what's happening here is that when we were, when we foiled out this type of example, we got x squared minus ax plus ax, and then minus a squared. So these middle terms cancel out, and that's why we end up with a binomial instead of a trinomial. So when you see a problem that looks like the difference of squares, all you need to do is figure out what x is, what is the thing that got squared, and what a is, what's the thing that got squared, and then you just plug them into the formula. x plus a times x minus a. So fun. Let's look at some examples. This one is easy. You can really readily tell what got squared. Obviously, it was an x that got squared for the first term, and then what do you square to get nine? Three. So this is three squared. Now we know that x equals x and a equals three. So now we just plug them in. It's a plus three times a minus three. Box her up. You're done. Now let's look at an example that's a little more challenging. The only thing here is that, well, we've got a y in there and we've got a coefficient in front of our x, but that's okay. They're all perfect squares and that means we can square root them and find out what was squared. So the 36x squared that comes from a 6x being squared, and 16y squared, well that's a 4y squared. So now we know what, well yeah, this is kind of our x and our a, so our factorization is 6x plus 4y times 6x minus 4y, ta-da! Now, I want to point out that there is no such thing as the sum of squares. So if you were given, for example, x squared plus nine, well, that is not factorable. The second case we're gonna look at is the perfect squares involving addition. This is the case where both of our binomials are exactly the same thing. And since they are both positive instead of one of each, like when we had the difference of squares, that means that instead of canceling out, our middle term is going to double up. So whatever you get when you multiply x and a, you double it for the middle. And we can recognize these problems because we'll have these two numbers here have a special relationship. There is another number that when you double it, you get six, and when you square it, you get nine. Can you think of what that number is? Yeah, it's three. So this is going to factor into x plus three times x plus three. And if you're ever unsure about your factoring, just multiply it back out. And we can see that we'll have two terms of three x, that'll add up together to give us this 6x, and 
3 times 3 is 9, just like we wanted. And if you want to save yourself some work, you can write it like so. And then we get this. You can write it out as x plus 3 times x plus 3, or if you want a shortcut, you can write it as x plus 3 squared. And let's do one more. Now, do you know what the square root of 121 is? If you don't, then you didn't do a good job of memorizing your perfect squares. And I keep telling you, it's so important. It's going to help you so much to have those numbers in your head. And if you do, you'd say, oh, the square root of 121 is 11. And then you can confirm that 11 times 2 gives you the 22. So the number we're looking for here is 11. And ta-da, we have x plus 11 times x plus 11. And again, you could write it out in a shorter form if you want. Okay, the next one is pretty similar. Perfect squares but this time there's subtraction instead of addition. And the only difference is that the middle term is going to be negative. The a squared is still positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. So this example looks just like the one on the other page, except we've got a negative 6x. The special number we're looking for is still three, but this time instead of x plus three squared, we're gonna have x minus three squared. It's an easy fix. And then here's our other example, except instead of plus 22x, we have a negative 22x, which means it's going to factor into x minus 11, or x minus 11 squared. Study these, and I promise you'll be glad you did.